Okay, let me wait for two more minutes. It's almost time. Okay, it's time, so let me get started. Okay, hello everybody, this is Junichiro Horikawa, and this is the tutorial live for Houdini, and this is the 44th episode for the series, the live series called Houdini Algorithmic Live, where I do some uh, al algorithmic design related tutorial every week, uh, mostly on Wednesday, Wednesday 9 p.m. Japan time. And today's topic is to create a procedural a, and foldable pop-up papercraft simulations using Houdini without using any DOP, just using SOP-based uh, method, as always using VEX, so that you'll be a, what you can do here. Uh, let me show you an example what I'm going to to try to achieve today. This is an example. First of all, you can switch between the geometry that you want to use as a base uh, for the folding, for the pop-up pop uh, papercraft folding simulations, like this one is the rubber toy. And then you can change the division of that geometry, input geometry then on the last you can simulate this kind of pop simulation just like uh, you can do with the paper so by creating a cut line on a paper you should be able to create the same stuff like this one so this is kind of a simulator for the pop-up papercraft in Houdini and you can fold it like this <clears throat> Okay, and more of all, uh, to be able to use this um, design as a uh, base for the fabrication or digital fabrication, maybe you can use it for the paper cutter or laser cut. I have also made this <coughs> cutting sheet um, <coughs> uh, lines so that you can send it for either laser cut or paper cutter to cut your paper or some thin material to create this kind of design that you have simulated on 3D space. So the red one is for the folding, the white one is for the cutting. Uh, I guess I should make these uh, ones white as well though <clears throat> or I can change the red one to a dot line like these so that you can cut it you can cut these and still can use it for the folding okay so that's what I have made as a template and that's what I'm going to show you today how you can create this kind of stuff and it's not going to be that easy. I mean, you do need some uh, <clears throat> knowledge about uh, rotation using VEX, especially uh, some matrix related operations, but I'm gonna show you how I did it, right? <clears throat> so, let me get started. 
First thing I need is some geometry that I would like to use it for the template, I mean for the base cutting, for the base geometry, so could be anything, any geometry can be used, <clears throat> although there are some rules that we need to apply after we have uh, imported that geometry. So let's try to use the rubber toy as an example. First I'm going to create a geometry node. Inside I'm going to create a rubber toy. Like this. <clears throat> okay. Now, uh, next thing I would like to do is to have a box which covers this toy. And this box is going to be the base <clears throat> geometry to use it for the uh, the cutting sheet uh, as a part of the cutting sheet. Okay, so I'm gonna create a box. Okay, and let's set the box size to say three. Okay. And for now, I'm going to make it wireframe view, right? Now, <clears throat> I am going to place this, uh, this rubber toy to somewhere on the middle of this box. So I'm going to move this a bit lower. Uh, not this one. Translate to... negative something like 8 okay and maybe I'm gonna move this uh, rubber toy to a minus mm, x direction as well a little bit something something like around here it's okay to it's okay that it's the geometry is not completed inside a box it's still okay if the geometry is a bit outside the boxes still works Okay, hello everybody. All right now, <clears throat> next thing I'm going to do is to first of all boxize this geometry for the to make it to make it as a box-based shape, so that you either have a front side, or top side, or the side side uh, for the plane. Okay, <clears throat> so to do that. Um, what I could do uh, using a volume is a easiest way, I think. So let's do that first. So uh, let me first create a, a ice offset to fill the density with this geometry, and make uh, also set the <clears throat> resolutions with your knees but maybe maybe I shouldn't use this one but instead I'm going to use the volume node applied to this box so that the, this box will going to be the base uh, for the volume resolution and for the resolutions I am going to change it by setting this uniform sampling divs okay now maybe I can parameterize this one so that later on I can <clears throat> change the resolution of the geometry itself. So I'm going to create a new controller, name this controller to have all the parameters that I want to control to be able to control the geometry later on in one place. Okay, I'm going to add the parameter called resolution From zero to say hundred, hundred. Let's set it to fifty for now. Copy this one. Set it to right here. Link with this one. Paste relative reference. Okay. Now what I want to do is to fill in this volume with which is inside this geometry. So I'm going to do that by using a volume wrangle to create some simple script to do what I want to do to fill out uh, fill in this uh, volume with the density. 
Now I think I also need to name this volume itself. So let's name this density. Okay. And I'm going to name this fill density by John. Okay. Now let's open up the code editor and Okay, so the easiest way to determine if the voxel, the current voxel inside a volume wrangle is inside the geometry or not is to check the dot product between the direction from the point inside the geometry to the nearest uh, primitive point or nearest position on the primitive using that direction together with the normal direction at that uh, projected point. So meaning if this is the geometry and if you are looking at right here, first of all project the point to the nearest position and this direction and from this projected point you can also retrieve the normal direction. So using those two uh, vectors you can calculate the dot product to see if the point is inside the geometry or not. If it's positive then this means the point is inside the geometry. If it's outside then the projected point will be somewhere around here and the normal will be something like here and the result of this dot product is negative so which means the point is in outside. So what we need to do is to check if the point uh, the vector from the point to a nearest point on the primitive and the dot product between the normal uh, is either positive or not. So why I'm going to use a function called XYZ distance to use that we need output parameter like prim and uv as an empty variable then calculate the distance using xyz dist from the second input with the current p current position for the voxel and a volume wrangle then you feed the output parameter okay now <clears throat> by having this primitive number and the uv you'll be able to get either a position or normal at the specific projected point so first of all we can get the position by using prim uv function from the second input by accessing to p attribute using prim number and uv and also you can also get the normal direction using same function but accessing to a normal n attribute using the same a primitive number and uv okay now I can calculate the direction from the current point to a projected point. I'm going to name this dear uh, as um, position minus current point position. And let's normalize this. Okay, now I can calculate the dot product between this direction and the normal and check if this uh, <clears throat> dot product is positive or not. If it's positive then it should be inside the uh, geometry. So if it's positive I'm gonna say if at, if at density is 1.0 okay let's see and seems like the volume which is inside this geometry has been filled with uh, density equal to 1. Okay, um, maybe I can set this to 0.5, still works, but maybe let's keep it to 0 for now. And let's see if I move this or rotate this, if it still works. Okay, 
still works. Okay. Alright. That looks good. Now, if I change the resolution, that still seems to work, so that's good. Now, <clears throat> um, what I really want to create, maybe we need to look carefully what we're going to create so that what kind of stuff that I need to do in order to achieve what I want to do. So I'm going to search for the picture, which looks like the things that I want to create, which you can go to a Pinterest and search for pop-up paper craft and you can see a bunch of stuff that is related to what I want to create. Let's look at the simple one, um, like this one. Or maybe this one. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So. So there are some characteristic uh, with this kind of geometry. One thing is that you all the side has a is opened as an empty uh, space, empty void, like this. And all the <clears throat> horizontal line is used for the folding. For the 90 degree folding and all the vertical line which in this direction is used for the cutting okay so that's one uh, characteristic of this geometry and you can see that everything is being made with the top face and the front face so there I guess there's no side face for this one okay now <clears throat> And you can probably see that there's also it everything is being every geometry you can see here from the picture is being extruded from the far far <clears throat> um, from this wall to the front and there is no like concave shape on the side everything is straight on the side Okay, and it is, it looks, it does have concave shape on the front, if you look from the front view or the side view, <clears throat> I mean from the top view, but not from the side view. So that's one characteristic as well. So, <clears throat> uh, and you can see that there is no like empty hole on the bottom of the geometry, no geometry on the bottom. There's every geometry is being extruded upward from the floor uh, same for the <clears throat> the depth uh, direction as well there are no such holes in between there are no such folding in between uh, right here in <clears throat> okay so that's kind of a characteristic here so to mimic this kind of um, to achieve this kind of conditions, what we need to do for this one, first of all, we need to project all these volumes to a, a XZ plane so that you don't have any space between the, the, the top volume and to, to the bottom volume. So if you have a, the top, if, we, the, if this volume is at the toppest and this can coordinate, then the bottom volume, the volume which is at the bottom of this uh, volume should all be filled out, filled. Same for this one. Uh, the bottom of this volume should everything, every volume uh, uh, be below this volume should be filled with uh, density equal to 1. Okay. And same for this direction. If you look at the x direction, all these volume on this side and x side x equal to negative side should be filled to make this as the same condition as this one <clears throat> so that's what I'm going to do next uh, what I'm going to do is to pick the volume which is at the top of 
the vol each of the volume uh, which when where the y value <coughs> where the y co coordinate is the highest at each x z coordinate and project the volume to the negative y direction so that every <coughs> every volume every voxel will be filled with one under uh, this top volume here and same for the z uh, x direction look for the the highest x value x coordinate value here and below this x coordinate everything should be filled okay so i'm gonna do one by one first for the y direction and then for the x direction and do it with a volume wrangle okay so first i'm going to create a volume wrangle let's say let's name this uh, projection y okay and then first of all i need to check if uh, the voxel that i'm looking at is currently have any density so if the current density is equal or more than zero Oops. This. then well there might be a chance that well i guess i don't need this one if What I need to check is which one is uh, which volume is at the edge, uh, <clears throat> which voxel is at the edge. Meaning, uh, this box. If you want to look for the this voxel, then it, the voxel is in between the density equal to one and on the plus y plus one to the y direction. The voxel value is zero. So. Uh, we can check this box so <clears throat> by checking the threshold between the contrast between the na uh, neighboring volume okay so meaning if um although although what we want to fill is where those empty voxels so let's say if a current density is equal to zero okay and from that we can check until like let's say the current volume that we're looking at it's somewhere around here okay and then <clears throat> what we can do is to do a loop uh, from the highest uh, value to uh, go down by one incremented by negative one then go a uh, loop until here and at some point you'll be able to see a that there is a <clears throat> contrast between the emptiness and the filled in voxel so that's there that's the condition where we can set the volume <clears throat> so let me see for int i equal to rest y which is going to be the highest y value until the current y value <clears throat> negative incrementation then what i'm going to do is to check the uh, the density at specific i position when the i is equal to y so float d is equal to volume index zero density set i x i i y okay and if the density is more than zero <clears throat> then 
at some point the voxel has found the density right and after that all the voxel should be filled with a density equal to one so i think we can create some temporal variable before going into the loop like td temporal d starting from zero and once you find out the density equal to uh, density more than zero then we can update this temporal density to one then after leaving this for loop we can set the current density for the voxel to this td so if you couldn't find any like <clears throat> in between voxel in between density volume then td will be kept as zero but if you find anything in between the loop then the volume should be become one now okay nothing seems to change here okay let me see what seems to be wrong here okay first all right let me see if anything seems wrong here <clears throat> starting from here let me first check if this itself is working okay it is working so we have started the td from zero and i'm using starting from the res y and i is more than i y i minus and then i got the density value day let me check if this density name is correct okay it it's named as density so that should be fine and then i'm using ix oh yep okay this is wrong okay now something looks really weird here ah well this has to be z sorry for that all right now <clears throat> the volume has been projected to z uh, y direction now what i need to do next is to do the same things for the x direction okay so i'm gonna copy this one and name this to x and instead of using y i'm going to rename this to x i x and i'm going to change this one to i and then this one to at i y how is it okay now here it goes so <clears throat> now that i have made the same conditions as this one what i need to do next is to uh, convert this into a polygon looking like this okay <clears throat> to do this um you can either like populate a point on each of the <clears throat> volume and like copy to use the copy to sub node to copy a box then merge it all together to and then <clears throat> delete the side but that's going to be a um, tons of unnecessary calculations and i'm just going to do it with another volume wrangle to create a face just the out outline face just the the <clears throat> just the face which covers this volume using vol uh, volume wrangle so it's another <clears throat> algorithmic way to create a surface without being without uh, using copy to sop node so it's a bit of uh, long code but uh, things that i'm do going to do here is pretty simple so let's make this face create faces Okay, so the first thing I like to do is to retrieve the <clears throat> uh, resolution, the size for each of the faces for each voxel. Okay, 
to do that we need to get the size of the bounding box first then divide it with a resolution number for x y and z so I'm gonna retrieve the size by using the get b box size okay from zero All right now and I can get the I will going to name the size for the X Y and Z for each surface or each face as X S X S Y and S Z and you can calculate it calculate it by calculate that by size dividing the size by a press x for the y size dot y divided by at res y s z size dot z divided by at res z okay now <clears throat> what i'm going to do now uh, maybe i should write some <clears throat> mm, sketch for this one um, okay so for so for the box so you have a bunch of points and each point have some density value right let's say the black dot has the density equal to one and the uh, white circle has a density equal to zero and what I want to create is the plane in between those <coughs> zero and one and if you have a white right here then I want to create a face at this position <coughs> okay so what I need to do and what I need to get is the, the again the contrast between the one right here and the next one right here and uh, see if the the density and the neighbor value is different or same if it's same then you don't really need to create the split edition line if it's different then it's the one of the <coughs> density value should be zero and one of the density value should be equal to one so I need to check whether the neighboring value is different or not and if it's different then I am going to create this face for each voxel okay and it is actually a 3d face which has four points so I need to set four point I need to create four points to create each of this face and with in between the voxel okay so <clears throat> so first thing I would like to do is to retrieve the uh, the neighboring uh, value for x direction, y direction, and z direction, and I can do that by using a same function that I used previously, volume index. The name is density, and then look at i x, which is the current x coordinate plus one, so that you can look at the next neighboring volume then keep the i, y, and i, z the same for the x direction, okay, and do the same for the y and z so n, y, and z for this one i, y, plus one for this one, i, z, plus one, okay oops Okay, I think I need one more parenthesis. Okay, now <clears throat> uh, for the x, we can check the current x, uh, current density value, and the x directional neighboring value. Okay, and <clears throat> If it's different, then we can create a volume 
I mean, if we can create a face in between those volume and empty volume, right? So uh, to do that, we need to use the, what we can use is, <clears throat> First of all, if this is the point that we have found out that the neighboring position is neighboring this uh, density value is different, then in that case, what we can do here is to <clears throat> first of all look for the middle point right here in between the neighboring value here. So that should be um, P plus a distance between right here let's say if this is an x direction then this should be sx so sx multiplied by 0.5 okay and <clears throat> for these points uh, you can calculate it by using the sy and sc so <clears throat> for x coordinate as for the y coordinate and z coordinate and this is for the x coordinate so by combining these you'll be able to c calculate some kind of vector value for each of the point it's it's going it's going to be either a clockwise or counterclockwise and we can change that later but we let's try to create those four points <clears throat> Uh, using those value x x s x x y x z and multiply by 0.5 okay and either x in this case x s y and s z is uh, some of the point have a negative value some of the point have a positive value for these additional x s y and s z right and x s x in this case will going to be remain the same for every point because x coordinate is not moving in for this phase, right? So um, <clears throat> let's create four points: vector, false one. So starting from the current point position, then uh, so this is the x coordinate, <clears throat> x direction. So we can first have this sx multiply by 0.5 for the y and z we can start from the negative so sy multiply by 0.5 and sz multiply by 0.5 and keep continue doing this for four points and s1 y should have a different value for the position too we, maybe we can change this sc to positive for the point three we can make s y and sc positive and for the last one we can make the s y only the s y positive and sc to negative okay and let's create a point to that position using add point position one two three four two three four and connect these points as a polygon using prim add prim add prim as a polygon type pt1 pt2 pt3 and pt4 Let's see it. Okay, now you can see that on the x direction, the face has been created in between the the positive density and the zero density here. Okay. Now I want to do the same for the y direction as well. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we don't need the side geometry. If we look at this one, the side geometry is empty. So I think the next thing I need to do is to have the top uh, geometry right here. So 
pretty much the same that I'm going to do. I'm going to copy this one and paste it and look for the use the y value. So if the density is not equal to the y directional uh, y uh, neighboring value, then we can keep this s y the same. But for these one, we can change this to starting from negative, negative, positive, positive for x. Okay, and let's see what it creates. Okay, now it looks like the normal direction is opposite for this one, so let's change the order. Um, what I could do, I could just change it right here. So starting from 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Okay, so that looks good. Okay, and do I need the Z direction to side geometry? And actually, um, I don't think so. I think not. Probably. Um, let me see. Let me think. Well, I might, I might need it. I might need it, uh, actually. Well, let's try it without having a side geometry for now. Let's see if we could continue with this one. If we need, we can just copy and paste uh, for the Z direction, uh, for the side direction. So I guess for now, we don't need these one. Okay, let's see. Now, uh, next thing I need to do is to, so now that I don't need these volume information anymore, we can delete it. So let's create a delete node and pick just the volume, right? So we have something like this. So what I want to do next is to trim this um, geometry out of the base box. Now I just want to have the the back side and the bottom side of from this box actually. So let's do that first. And maybe I can use other than this box right here. Maybe I could or probably using the same one should be fine. Now, <clears throat> deleting the, uh, just keeping the, the back side and the uh, bottom one, uh, what I could do, I could do it um, manually or maybe by script. I'm gonna use the primitive wrangle again. I mean, <clears throat> primitive wrangle to check the normal direction for each faces. Pick face. Then check for the normal direction. If at n equal to z is mm, positive, or maybe I can think of which parts I, sh I want to delete. So when the absolute value for the z for the normal uh, value, z coordinate for the normal value is equal to zero, then I want to remove the face. So remove prim zero, prim num. The reason why I'm using script to do, do this kind of operation is that <clears throat> so that um, you have more control over the base geometry that you're going to input even this so that this still works even if you rotated the base geometry the base box geometry to some different angle it still gives you a back side and a bottom side if you try to pick up manually like doing this one then if you rotate the geometry then it doesn't really work so to be able to use it 
flexibly I'm writing the code. So I guess I need another conditions for to delete the top one and the front one. So if n at y is equal to uh, more than zero or at n dot x is more than zero, then I also want to delete the face. Okay, looks good. Now I currently this is facing backward, so I'm going to make it reverse. So the normal direction will be reversed. Okay. Now I would like to also, just in case, set the normal for these. Okay, sorry. Now what I want to do now is to uh, trim out this base face for the back side and bottom side using these uh, geometry information. If you look from the top, you want to trim out this outline. If you look from the front side, you want to trim out this uh, outline from the base. Okay, so let's do that by uh, first of all, I'm going to project all the uh, top faces and side faces to a, the back wall and the floor. Okay, so uh, what I need to do is to first split those two different values to uh, split those two different values so that I can project it with, uh, differently. So... <clears throat> I didn't set any groups here, but maybe go. We can. I can go back to the create faces under a volume wrangle, and for each of the face, I can set some group like set prim group zero. This one was front, and this one as top. Set prim group zero top frame one okay now I can use a node like split to split these into two set top and side okay <clears throat> now and I what I want to do is to project all these faces on to this bottom face right here Okay, now I might be able to use ray, but there is a chance that this ray misses because, uh, especially on the side here. So to, to make it sure, I am going to project it using code again. So point, I'm going to use point wrangle. <coughs> and what I'm going to do what uh, what I need to retrieve is the bounding box information of this <coughs> um, whole geometry, this box, which is coming from this one. Okay, so I can connect it right here. And let's retrieve the minimum point position for this uh, bound from this second input bounding box so min is equal to get box get b box min from second input then we can project the x value to the min dot x then everything will be attached to the wall okay it's not all right well this has to be projected y direction, so actually y should be equal to min dot y. Okay, so that everything will be projected on the floor for this one. So project y. For this one, project to the wall. So instead of setting to a y, I'm going to set it to x. Okay, like this. 
right now if I look at it I look at the point visualize the point actually there is uh, tons of points exist here so let's fuse it first okay and create a outline just create the outline by using a divide node to remove the unshared edge this one for each of them so that you only have the outline curve now <clears throat> there is a bit of um um problem i mean it's not really a problem but you see a bunch of points exist here uh, in the straight line and that is actually not really necessary let me show that point up a little bit okay doesn't raise up the point size does it okay this one so <clears throat> I actually don't want to have these points on the straight line just want to have the end point for at the corner uh, the points on the middle doesn't really mean anything it just makes the calculation slower so I just I want to remove that and there might be some nodes to make these as a smooth line but in Houdini but I don't know what the node name is so I'm gonna do it in a procedural I mean the in a algorithmic way using VEX again so first of all I'm going to merge these two together so there are some role for these points if you look at the neighboring neighbors for if you look at this point then and look at the neighbor points the vectors from this point to the the first neighbor and the second neighbor is flat okay it's horizontal and it's parallel i mean meaning the dot product is uh negative one but if it's at the corner the dot product between this vector and this vector is zero if it's 90 degree if it's always zero so we can check the neighboring points with the vector value uh, getting the vector value to the neighbor points and use two neighbors vectors uh, with the dot product to estimate whether this point is on the straight line or not if it's straight line we can just remove that to make it simple okay so that's what i would like to do next i'm going to use point wrangle let's name this smooth outline <clears throat> okay and for each line i'm going to retrieve the neighbor value neighbor point information as an array using neighbors at pt num and if the length of neighbors is equal to two which most of the cases should be equal to two then uh, retrieve to point position first from the neighbor list so the first one p at neighbor first point and let's copy this one to retrieve the second point position second neighboring point position now we can re we can calculate the two vectors between these two position and the current point position so vector d1 is equal to normalize at uh, position 1 minus at p do the same for the position 2 
direction two is position two minus at p. Right. <clears throat> now, now I can calculate the dot product if dot between direction one and direction two is, let's say, in this case, if it's <clears throat> negative one, then it should be uh, the one that I want to delete. It should be on the uh, on top of the straight line. So let's make sure that it's less than something like 0.5. Okay, and if that's so, we move the point and see that we have cleaned up the point. All right. Okay, that looks good. Now, what I need to do now is to make the hole from to this uh, side geometry and the bottom geometry. So, um, I think I can just do the boolean for this one. So, having this space to the first input and this uh, projected geometry to the second input, then boolean between surface and then do the subtraction but okay it doesn't seem to work that well okay let me see if I can do okay is it let me first check if it's projected Yep. And it did. <clears throat> Still seems as the same as this one. Is it really? Okay, let me go back and in. Okay, now it works. I think it was a cache bag. Cache bug. Alright, so now it opens up using boolean between the surface and surface using subtract. And I had this original geometry, which is this one. <clears throat> so I can then I can merge these two together uh, to uh, this one right here. To have a, a base set up. So if you just want to <coughs> have a still geometry then this is just it. But if you want to create a folding simulations, folding actions, then you gotta do more of uh, calculations. Okay, And I'm gonna show you how you can do that, which is going to be really VEX oriented. So <coughs> If you feel tired, you can always leave at any time, All right? So keep that in mind. Now, um, but there, if I show up the wires for this one, actually, this is these um, faces are made of bunch of small faces. So I think I want to <clears throat> make these as one plane for connected one as well so I guess I could go here go here somewhere right here and do the same things that I did here for not uh, for the one that's not being projected this one and this one okay and then merge these together And then this one also has some points on the straight line, so I can just copy and paste this smooth outline code that I created to make these, uh, to remove unnecessary points in between the line and then connect it through here. Okay. 
All right. Okay. <clears throat> now, let's go to a folding simulation, shall we? And it is going to be um, a lot of calculations just to just for reminder. First of all, I'm going to fuse it everything for now. Right now, <clears throat> the idea that I'm going to uh, achieve here is uh, first of all, <clears throat> if we have a simple geometry like uh, this one, this kind of stuff. So, <clears throat> what I want to do is to flip, uh, do some pop-up simulations so that you can open or close this origami-like stuff, okay? <clears throat> and to do that, uh, if, you, if you look carefully how each of the plane's rotation is being done, Actually, the top plane where the normal direction is at the y direction is not rotating at all, but only those plane which is facing x direction is rotating. If you look from the side, starting from this stuff, and if you try to fold it, it looks like this, and it goes. this and you can see that the the bottom side and this one the top plane uh, from this box the small box is not rotating it's just translating only the one that's right here which was facing originally facing x direction was is rotating with some angle okay so that's one thing you should remember. So, <clears throat> and same for this direction, looks like this. And what's important here is that whenever you do the rotation, the size is kept the same, of course so that you can actually use it for a physical like <clears throat> fabrication right now maybe I can do it like this okay so what I want what I'm going to do is to split if we if we have a geometry like this I'm going to split it into a the x direction geometry and the y direction geometry where the normal is equal to y or normal equal to x and on, I'm going to only rotate these one with some angle okay and after doing that after rotating these geometries I am going to uh, move translate each of the fate each of the plane to a specific position okay so I'm going to use this one as a parent uh, the the parent the backside wall as a parent geometry <clears throat> and then and I'm going to create a connection connection information between all those connected pieces to this parent so for this one this valley this geometry is connected also this valley geometry is connected so if the parent has an id equal to one and 
this one has an ID code to uh, two. This one has an ID code three, and this ID code two value has the connection information which connects to ID equal to one, and this one also has a connection information ID equal to one. And then this one, uh, this side one is connected to either this one or this one. You can choose either one. And let's say this one has an ID code to four and is connected to ID code to three. And having these connection information, you can step by step translate um, <clears throat> the geometry. Uh, to connect all these at the last when after you have rotated the geometry so after you have rotated first of all you rotate uh, the whole <coughs> x oriented geometry like this then you look for the connecting piece for this parent which in this case uh, this one and this one so what, what I'm going to do is to move this to a position, move this one to a specific position. Okay, <clears throat> now after doing that, look for the next connection for this, either this one or this one, which is going to be this one, and move this to the corresponding position. And as a result, you'll be able to create <clears throat> this kind of... Um, uh, looks like a complex rotation, but it's actually the basic. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it's pretty simple rotational simulations. So there's no magic here. There's no much uh, difficult like mm, mathematical things going on. I'm just doing one by one recursively by retrieving the previous or the parent, the children's information and pick one by one to rotate and translate <clears throat> that's the only thing that I'm doing here but that's also kind of a reason why it's so code oriented because it has to be it has to do with the uh, recursive it has to be recursive <clears throat> and actually Vex is doesn't allow you to write a recursive functions so I'm doing instead I'm doing a similar way to write the recursive using for loop or while loop well I'm not going to use while loop that because that's a bit uh, dangerous going to make might going to make an infinite loop so I'm going to test with the for loop <clears throat> by making the iteration really big and the last Okay, so have that idea. Let's first create some attribute, which is which I'm going to use to retrieve or to store the connect, connecting information. I'm going to use attribute create, and I'm going to create two attributes. One is called ID for the primitive. I'm going to make an integer starting the default value as mm, negative one. Okay. And another value is prev prim. It's going to be the connection information. So to determine the previous primitive number. Okay, it's for the primitive again, and it's an integer as well. And let's set the default value to negative one as well. Okay, let's check the geometry spreadsheet for the primitive. So now I have both ID and prep frame starting from minus one for everything. Okay. Now 
uh, what I'm going to do next is to split off these faces uh, to a unique face so that uh, there is no um, weld welded points which is necessary for necessary to rotate each face independently okay so I'm gonna use facet and then make this uh, unique points so that everything is split it every face will be split it to individual faces without sharing any points okay but I, I do still need the weld information in order to get the neighboring information so I I need both uh, split in information as as well as this <coughs> uh, welded point information to retrieve the neighboring polygon all right so so here comes the most um, uh, long coding for today I'm going to use attribute wrangle. Oops, what's this? Nope. Oops. Okay. I think it crashed. Let me reopen it. Okay. Facet. Now I'm going to use a attribute wrangle and input this facet output to the first input. Change this to detail and then connect this fused point information to the second input. Then I'm going to name this to recursive fold info. Now let's start writing some code here. <clears throat> um, let's see. First of all, I'm going to uh, create an information from the parent starting from this uh, back wall and then go one by one by looking at the connected pieces. So if this one will be the first iteration and second one will be either this one these faces connected to the wall or the flow one okay okay and i need to, in order to make it recursive i need to know if i have already used that primitive i have already visited that primitive already or not so first i'm going to create a integer array to check if I have used that primitive already or not. So I'm gonna use visited. I'm gonna create a visited array as an integer array, starting from an empty value. <clears throat> and I want to append this first back wall as the first value inside this array. And I need to check what the number of this wall here so let me check what's the number for this one and i want to make it zero so that it'll be easy to understand if i show up this point primitive number where is it okay currently this one is equal to zero and the wall is equal to one so let's change that <clears throat> order shall we um how should we do that the bot the array comes from right here right nope this one okay 
and originally it comes from this one and this at this point this was seems like this is zero let me make the guide font larger so okay so this is zero one after I have do the boolean it became flipped mm. all right now in that case oops I can use a sort node to use the say by y for the primitive sort and then reverse so that the the y val if, if the y value is bigger then it starts from that primitive and there's only two primitive here so this side one always becomes zero in this case okay now that looks good i mean it doesn't really have to be starting from wall i mean you could start from the floor as well if you want yeah it doesn't really matter which way you start from but it's, oh, it's always a good idea to start from the big face i think i mean you could start from some of the face inside here like these small uh, <clears throat> plane but it's a bit a bit hard to track down what's going on uh, by doing that so i'm gonna make i'm gonna do it from with the big face <clears throat> okay that's kind of a reason and that's the only reason All right so i am going to append this zero number primitive to this visited first and then <clears throat> I am also going to or maybe I can just say zero here that will be easier okay and let's uh, also set the ID for the first primitive that I have picked and let's start the ID from zero so set prim uh, attrib zero id at zero position with zero value there's so many zeros so it's a bit hard to understand but this is the number for the primitive and this is the value that i have uh, set for this id value okay now <clears throat> here comes uh, a recursive value that but before going into the recursive loop let's do a single iteration without getting into the loop so what i want to do is to look for the connected piece which is these one and the floor and change these uh, ids and set a prep num prep prim informations which is going to be the connection information okay so first of all i am going to uh, <clears throat> First of all, I'm going to create a another array called primnums, which store all the primitive that we are looking at at the current iterations, which in which initially starts from zero as well. As well. So this is the only plane starts from the f from the zero iteration, the first iteration. Okay, and now. I'm going to loop through all the primitive inside this primnums. Which in this case there's only zero inside here. And let's pick that number out of this array. Okay. And then what I'm going to do next is to retrieve the uh, neighboring information using poly neighbors uh, so that you will be able to retrieve the neighboring primitive number for these connected pieces and the floors. And you cannot do that for a, you cannot use this poly neighbors for the first input because everything is split it. And no points is being shared so you got it what you got to do is to use the second input primitive <coughs> information to retreat uh, to use with the poly neighbors so uh, int 
int polynase is equal to poly neighbors from the second input with a current primitive number which in the first loop it's always zero okay now that now that I have retrieved the neighbor numbers which is going to be these numbers for these primitive and these uh, the flow of primitive numbers I am going to uh, append this neighboring information to some um, <clears throat> array that I'm going to create beforehand. I'm gonna name let's I'm gonna name this nase. Okay, and append the result of the prior neighbors inside this neighbor. Kind, it's because I want to just do the same operation for <clears throat> in the same iteration okay if there are multiple primitive numbers right here then just want to like store every neighboring values into this one single neighbor array so that'll be easier to use I mean you don't you don't really need to do the calculation for calculation for each uh, sub group okay now after doing this I'm also going to um, uh, look through all the neighbor numbers and for each of the neighbor numbers I'm going to apply the prevnum attribute which is going to be used as a connection so for int n echo to zero and then poly maze and retrieve the uh, <clears throat> poly or actually I can pre I can do the similar things I can create a array called prevs it as an array and append this prev number with this primnum so primnum is going to be the previ previous number in which in this case zero so all for all these connected pieces zero is the previous number and which is going to be the connection uh, information okay oops Okay, something is wrong with this. All right. <clears throat> now uh, let's apply and see if there's no errors at the moment. Okay. Okay. Now, now that I have retrieved all the necessary information, uh, it's time to. <clears throat> Mm, look for each of the neighbor information loop through in, oh, each of the neighbor information which is at here and get the na point neighboring primitive number like this and also we can also retreat the previous number as well yeah. since the array number of array size for the privs and naves should be the same because of these okay so after doing this mm. What I need to do now is to first check if I have already, if this neighboring information that I have picked up is is already be being visited before or not. If it's visited, then this primitive already has an information about the previous information, the previous primitive connection information. So we need we don't really need to use that. 
we can skip that so and this visited information is uh, used with this one right here so gonna use it find uh, visited if this in if any uh, if neighboring primitive number is in is not inside this visited then we can go to the next operation which means if it's negative if you find anything then the value for this find function gives you a positive number which is going to be the index number for the find object find number so in that case you don't need to do anything for it so in this case i'm looking for the negative value if it if you couldn't find any value neighboring primitive number inside visited then you can uh, set some attributes to this neighbor primitive okay now if you couldn't find any then first thing I need to do is to um, uh, retrieve the point number <coughs> from uh, for the primitive so in this case we have uh, things like this and we have a uh, let's make this simple we have a thing like this so let, if we have started from this one and this is the second one right here and currently we are looking at this one which is the nay equal to one okay and what I want to do next is to retrieve the uh, point number <coughs> um, for this primitive which is this one this one this one and this one and actually this point number is different when the point is being fused or not okay if it's if the point is fused then the total number of the point for this geometry should be six but if it's not fused if the <coughs> every point is unique then in total you have eight points see <coughs> i would i am going to retrieve both point number information when the point is fused and when the point is not fused uh, <clears throat> and i'm gonna use that later and also do the same for the previous primitive which for this one if the <clears throat> neighboring is equal to one and the prevnum was equal to zero then i'm going to retrieve this primitive and i'm also going to retrieve the point number of this prev previous uh, primitive number okay and also the fused number as well um, unfused or fused number as well and what i the reason why i'm getting those point number is to create uh, <coughs> find out the connection point okay so for this point if the point was equal to five then the connection the, <coughs> the connected point number should be three if the point number is equal to like this is like six then the connection number will be equal to four and so on so I, I need for each of the point I need this connection point number for the later translation <coughs> okay so that's what I'm going to do all right so that sounds really complex but let's do that I guess there are some other easier way to do this similar things but for now let's do in my way now first of all I'm going to retrieve the primitive point number array from the uh, first of all from the second input which is diffused primitive so prim points um 
one naive and and prim pts prim point zero prev <clears throat> hoped you would use local matrices oh sorry it's not uh it's not using local matrices in this case <clears throat> i mean there should be a way to use that um, method as well so I hope somebody would came up with, with that one as well. <clears throat> or maybe I could try that with other trial. In this case, I made it a bit more simple as a method. If you use local matrices, you'll be, you'll be able to do much more complex translation or transformation, I think. Okay, int prev pts. Um, print points for the prep number, previous number, okay, and prev and prev points. It's going to be prim points zero prev. So when the input is e equal to zero, then you have a unique points. If it's equal to one, then you have a fused points. Oops, it has to be neighbor. Okay. Apply. Check. Nope. All right. Now, now I want to get as a final output. What I want to get is the previous point number and the current point number. So let's have these as an integer for each point I mean for example if we are looking at this one as a prev previous frame this big wall as a previous plane and this big f uh, floor is a next plane then I only need to get one of the point one of the connected points either this one, this one, or this one, or this one, okay? And maybe I can get this one. So for example, let's see if I got this connected points right here. And what I need to get is the previous point number, the point number for this point, for this primitive, <clears throat> for this unconnected primitive, okay? And the current point number for this current primitive, unconnected, uh, unwelled, uh, unshared point or splitted face primitive point number for the, at this point. If you use the and and the fused point number is used to used as a guide to look for this specific point number which shares the same position. So this is uh, this is the guide and this is the actual point number that I want to retrieve from, which is coming from the unshared point. Okay, <clears throat> which looks, which sounds really complex, even I think so. Now, let's loop through all the um, prim points. Um, they're this one right here, unshared points. Well, everything, I mean, Everything should have for this one and this one should share the same point number. This one on this one should also share the same point uh, count. I mean, not the number, but count. So int uh, e n zero and lens prim pts. Okay and. <clears throat> Let's get the prim pt, prim pts at n, k. Okay. And what I'm going to do is to find if this primitive pt, prim pt is inside this prev pts, okay? If it's shared or not. 
um, <clears throat> if it's uh, if it's shared, then wait a minute. It's, am I doing correct? If it's shared, then that mean that point is connected. So uh, I can use that information with this uh, with the <clears throat> same index number to retrieve the actual point number from this one and this one for the previous and the current point number. So and pb is equal to find let's name this p index is equal to find prev pts prim pt so if i could find this prim pt which is from the fused point uh <clears throat> number which is this one uh, one of the points inside this primitive number is sharing with the previous primitives point uh, list then meaning if the p index is equal to or equal to or larger than zero then that means that this primitive number is sharing with one of the points with the previous primitive and that in that case then uh, you have found the shared points so let's say it's that it's this point and the p index is the index for the fused point number right here <clears throat> but we can use this we can use this p very p index number f to retrieve the previous um, point number from the n prev pts with the p index which is this from this one right here <clears throat> okay and for the current pt we can actually use n itself which is coming from this one which is which was used with this prim pt at uh, n now <clears throat> this might be a little confusing but what i'm what i'm doing here is just linking uh the <clears throat> fused point uh numbers and the unfused point numbers right here okay and once we found out the uh, <clears throat> set we can just leave the loop so i'm gonna make it break Okay, so right after I have created the set, oops, right after I have re uh, created the set, the this pre previous point and current PT should be uh, filled in more than negative. So that's when I can set this as an attribute to a current or neighboring primitive. So set prim attrib zero prev prim to the neighbor with a prev number and set prim attrib zero prev pt. Did I have it? Maybe not. I didn't create it, but it's not prev pt and set prim attrib zero current pt. PT. Okay, I think I didn't create these information previously, so let's go back here and create that as well. So let's make it for primitive for attribute for primitive integer and the name of the attribute is prev pt. Let's set the default value to negative one and this one to current PT and set it to integer, set the default value to negative one. Okay, now apply, accept, and let's see what we have here for each of the primitive. Do we have any current PT or 
being set doesn't seem like so okay this okay well first of all i think i missed it i think this has to be primitive and go back here to look for the primitive attributes now i can see that some of the primitive has this prev frame and prev pt applied okay so let's check what kind of primitive has been applied we can check that by setting some random color to this uh, random color to this primitive <coughs> for the neighbors so um, let's say set uh, first of all I'm going to create a color random color ve vector call equal to rand maybe zero for now and then set prim attrib zero cd at neighbor with this color okay now so this is the first iteration the result of the first iteration you can see that starting from the big wall all the connected primitive has been <coughs> changed with this color and each of those colored face has its attribute called a prep uh, prep pt a prep prim prep pt and current pt and if you look at the prep prim every filled in primitive number should be equal to zero which is equal to this wall the number of this wall primitive so it looks correct and for those point numbers we can check it by showing up the point number and let's check these values right here so let's see if let's see for this one right here it says eight eight three for one of the point i cannot see for the other point but uh, let's see if there's any eight eight three eight so there's eight hundred eighty three right here and for the pr which is for the current pt so if i move this geometry a bit off right here like this and look at the connection between this one and this one so this one has 883 which is this one and for the connection you can look at the priv pt and that is equal to zero and it is actually equal to zero so you can see that um, the connection has successfully been made with those point numbers <clears throat> okay so that looks good so now what we need to do is to continue the same step for uh, f until it covers all the faces uh, uh, until it visit all the faces okay <clears throat> so that's what I need to do all right so mm -hmm. okay so let me think uh, mm -mm -mm -mm. To do that um, let's see okay so I think I need to do several more steps uh, one thing is to set an ID for each of the iterations so set prim attrib zero ID at the neighbor with the current ID plus one which is current ID is equal to zero plus one now I, maybe I can I should set the current ID as a named as T or something for now starting from zero then use T for the color and T for this ID okay right now and I also need to make sure that I have already visited this neighbor value right here so I'm going to append to the visited array with this neighbor value neighbor point made with primitive value and <clears throat> for the next iterations 
we need to update this um, prem nums right here which was started from zero but for the next iteration we have a bunch of primitives to start with which is colored in green right now let's make <clears throat> okay so what i want to have this prim nums for the next iteration is the bunch of primitive number for these green colored primitive which starts from one and 64 is 68 and so on so to do that we need to have some temporal array before we uh, we get into the <coughs> this for loop uh, right here right here so <coughs> or maybe not here somewhere right here okay so I'm going to create a temp neighbor array starting from an empty value and then each time I have visited each time the neighboring has been used I'm going to append this neighbor to the neighbor temporal neighbor array okay <clears throat> and then by exiting the loop after i have exited the loop i'm going to update this prim nums with the temp name for the next iteration all right now since i'm going to make it as a recursive i need to set when to stop this uh, recursive loop i mean i didn't make i haven't made the recursive loop yet but if I do that, then I need to set some conditions when to stop the loop or it might go into infinite loop. So I can do that somewhere around here. If all the primitive has been visited, then you, I, can, I can say that you can stop, you can stop the calculations. If the, all the visited value has been, uh, if the, all the primitive has been visited, meaning all the primitive has been colored or have all the primitive has some specific ID more than zero then that means that's when you can stop the loop so I can set the conditions by saying if the visited array the length of the visited array is equal to the current primitive number okay so that's when you can loop when you can leave the for loop I think right and okay so for this break it just exists exit this one so I guess I need one more break for the another uh, iterations for uh, and I'm going to create a variable called end loop, set to zero, and if this condition meets, then I'm going to set the end loop equal to one. Then after come here, if the somewhere around here, if and loop is equal to one then or you can also break the loop for the uh, recursive loop currently i don't have it right now so this break doesn't really work gives you an error okay <clears throat> now i get i guess it's time to set uh, it's time to create a recursive loop now what else i need to do what else do I need to do? Hmm. Maybe that's it. So, okay, let's do the recursive loop. And we can do it by adding another loop somewhere around here. Yeah, somewhere around here. Where we, this is the part where we have set for initial conditions when the, when we start did the 
calculation primitive equal to zero. Now after setting the initial condition, we can use the another loop. Let's use the T as a another loop iterational value. Start from the really small numbers like five to test out. Okay, and we can remove this T and then go until right here. And create an index. Then we can have this break now. Okay, now I have some errors here. Okay, I guess this has to be. Wait a minute. Let me check the errors. Hmm. Reference to undefined variable. That's weird. Name convention. Or let me copy this one and look for the visited. Is okay. Spell mistake. Okay, so it seems act. It's already working. You can see that all the faces has been colored. And it seems like you only needed like one, two three, four, maybe five iterations to finish the, to color all the faces. So five was enough for in this case. If I set it to three, then it stop until three, you have one, two, three colors being set. If you set it to four, you find, look for the next iteration, next neighbors, which is for these uh, green one and if it's I uh, set it to five you go to the next neighbors which is this dark blue right here okay so looks like it's working and what if I set the resolutions to really high something like these oops okay all right another uh, errors here okay let's go check the crash file um, hmm. seems to have this error a lot Okay, now hopefully it doesn't crash anymore. If I change the resolution, yeah, it works. And more resolution you have, uh, more iteration you need to fill in all the um, <clears throat> faces. Okay, so the five iteration is not enough anymore. In that case, you can increase the maximum iterations, which I have set it here, right here. Now, probably to make sure that it, for any kind of setup to fill in for all the faces, maybe using a while loop is better, but I'm afraid it's at some point it's going to crash it crash if it's there if there's too much. So I'm going to keep this uh, with the this for loop set up so that you can set the limitation. So I'm going to set the limitation to something like 30, but it still works just fine with not much delay, calculation delay. Okay, looks great. Mm. Now everything looks good and I think every primitive should have all the necessary information for the transformation. Right here. Okay, priv not priv frame priv pt. Uh, if its primitive is equal to zero, then it's negative one, but that's fine. 
Okay, so everything looks fine. So now we can use this information to actually for the <coughs> rotational transformation. Okay, so if you have made through this far, then it's a bit more to go. All right, now, first of all, I am this color is just for debugging, <clears throat> just checking if the recursion has been done correctly. So I don't need these color anymore. So I'm going to recolor this first using primitive Rango again, based on the normal direction. Maybe for the top, I'm going to change the color for the play plane, which facing top and facing forward, facing at the front side. And gonna just gonna use the random color. Okay, <clears throat> make it really simple. So if dot at n set zero one zero is larger than point five, then set the color to with the random using a random seed plus some constant value and else bcd brand chf seed plus some other constant value okay then i if i change this seed value you'll be able to change the set of colors for the top side and the front side Okay, let's go with this one. Okay. <clears throat> now, next. Next is the one that I'm going to rotate each of the primitive um, with <clears throat> uh, going to rotate each of, each of the primitive using either Primrango again, I guess. Mm -hmm. Although, I mean, if you think about it, <clears throat> you cannot uh, move or rotate the geometry at once. That is because, say if you ha have a geometry like this, right? And first thing you do is to rotate this one, okay? I look, rotate like this. And second thing you do is to move this one to the specific direction, a specific uh, position using the point information that I've created. Now, <clears throat> the next thing I'm, I'm going to do is to move this uh, rotated, uh, move this rotated object to right here and this one to right here and this one to right here and here so you gotta need some kind of feedback loop to move one by one you cannot just use primitive rango at once to move everything in one place because <clears throat> the position for the next primitive is related to the previous primitive so in that in because of that, I am going to use a for each number with the feedback loop. Okay, so first I'm going to set it as a by count, then feedback each iteration, and then <clears throat> uh, set it to fetch feedback. Okay, and Although maybe I don't need to set it as a um, number because I can use the primitive attribute called ID for this one. ID determines which one goes next. So start, starting from zero and the next iterations you move, you what you need to rotate and move it is the one that has one, the ID code one. Then comes two next, and then three next, and 
4, 3 and 4, so on. Okay, <clears throat> so that so I can set the loop setting to by mm, pieces and points and by primitive and piece attribute as oops sorry for that <clears throat> uh, where was I so get okay, I think I need to do from here so what I need to do in order to do the <clears throat> feedback loop I'm going to do use the for each loop or maybe for each named primitive okay this one and change this change the gather method to feedback each duration and then set this to fetch our fetch feedback so that it becomes the feedback loop now the number of um, loops that I need to do is based on the ID for each primitive because this ID determines <clears throat> when you should do the transformation okay so based on this ID I want to make it as an order so going back to the for each end I'm going to change this piece attribute ID which will create in total nine for this case if you have a low resolution you should be able to have a less feedback loop well doesn't seem like so yeah now it becomes six okay <clears throat> now before getting into feedback loop i need to rotate these um <clears throat> vertical plane first which is going to be pretty simple so let's just do that first um to rotate i'm going to do the i'm going to use the point or primitive rank or I guess since I want to rotate for each primitive so um, <clears throat> primitive angle okay and let's name this fold okay now first of all I am going to retrieve all the points from the each of the primitive and PTS frame points now uh, let me also check for the groups so I have front and top but this primitive group seems like it's gone at some point so let's recreate these groups for the front side and the top side maybe I can do that right here for the primitive color so for this one this is for the top primitive so set prim group zero top prim num to one okay and let's copy this and set this one to side prim num to one All right All right now <coughs> mm. Now I have side and top being grouped out. Now what I want to rotate is only this side one. So going back to the fold, I can set the group filter to side. Was it side? No, front. Sorry. Okay, did I make it? Oops, I think I need to set it as front. So I have either front or top. Okay. Right now, going back to the fold. So I'm only going to rotate the front side. <clears throat> okay, now. Um, look for each of the point, loop through each of the point. Get the point position at each 
point number and then <coughs> mm, wrote create the rotational matrix starting from the identity matrix then rotate use rotate this matrix with some parameter that you want to control maybe I will multiply pi by some angle value using uh, z-axis as a rotational axis okay so then let's set the range from minus 0 0.5 to 0.5 so that the range becomes 90 degree to minus 90 degree okay <clears throat> now after this I'm going to move the position of the each of the point maybe using the middle point of the primitive as a center of the rotation or maybe not maybe I should use the minimum point position as a center of the rotation I mean the center position of the rotation so in that case I should retrieve the minimum point position for each primitive so get vector min equal to get b box min and I can say 0 i to a prim num okay and then first of all I can move the current point position <coughs> to the negative direction so that I can reset what point position using this as an axis I mean the center rotation and then multiply the matrix to rotate and then add the minimum value that I have subtracted back again and update the current point position each of the point position with the updated point right here set point at 0 p at pts i with pause okay now let's see the rotation now seems to work no though uh, the location of each of the plane is wrong as you can see but we can fix that <coughs> by using this for loop uh, feedback loop okay currently it's just rotate it just rotates the the plane one the vertical plane now although by even though it looks even though by changing the rotation the point position becomes uh, far different it's not a big problem because the information between information of the connection which is uh, which was at the primitive attribute which is called as prev pt and current pt is preserved as it is even if you do the rotation so you can still use that to make these uh, geometry back to the connected piece the connected position so let's do that we are almost there mm, right okay and i am going to use another so each of the loop you'll be able to get a primitive which shares the same id so I am going to use the primitive wrangle again inside this one and I'm gonna name this translate okay okay now and starting from ID equal to zero 
and until I until the last ID we're going to move uh, this geometry so that the current point number will be stick to the previous uh, point number okay let's see now in order to do that we need to retrieve the ID value which is you can retrieve from ID value right here so that's not a problem okay so and this feedback loop should only mm, well let's see uh, but seems like wait a minute <clears throat> Seems like this for each loop with the piece attribute called ID is just used with just used for the count, is it? It's not looking okay, so that that's because I'm using the feedback each iteration. So I need to pick I need to retrieve the iteration number for this loop as well in order to control only the iteration equal to ID uh, meets I mean <clears throat> only when the condition uh, ID equal to iteration the current iteration met so to get the current iteration for this for each feedback loop uh, I can create this meta import node and this one has a detail attribute called iteration and we can use that Okay, now let's retrieve that information first. Detail from second input called iteration. Then if current ID is equal to the iteration. So when the iteration is equal to zero, then only the ID equal to zero will be used to move. Okay. <clears throat> now, and I want to make sure that the <clears throat> prev p uh, let me see let me go back to the right here and what kind of information I had for the primitive so there are some the the, the primitive equal to zero has a negative value for the prev pt or prev prim so let's say and we we can skip this one if the prim prim prev primitive is equal to negative one then we can skip the calculation so we can create another condition here uh, if if i at prev prim is larger than zero larger or equal than zero then we can do the calculation and then we can retrieve all the point numbers from the point uh, from the primitive all right then retrieve the prev pt uh, from the current point uh, pr current primitive which is this one i mean we don't really need to make it a uh, variable do we okay now, <clears throat> from this point list, uh, I am going to get two point position. Okay, one is at current PT, and one at previous. PT, okay right and then and if we are looking at this geometry right for example this one let's say this is the current PT and the then the prev PT is somewhere around here so current PT and prev PT right here so what we need to do is to create a vector between these connecting these um, points and we just need to use this vector value that we have created to move this to right here so that it's going to be connected so 
<clears throat> easy as that we can make a moving translation vector which is going to be position 2 minus position 1 and uh, for each of the point inside this primitive uh, points num array we can move each of the point you by adding this directional value directional vac vector so loop through all the points inside the pts get the current point position for each of the primitive points And then add this directional value and update the point position with this updated. Oops, it has to be n. Okay, <clears throat> I think I missed something. Mm, this should be correct. Okay, uh, well I got I gotta leave this for loop. Okay, now you can see that everything has come to the right place and the folding effect is now completed. And now you can move this slider to do the folding. It looks like doing some complex <clears throat> mathematical operations but it's actually not it's pretty simple operations right here just rotating first then translating using the information that I've created right here okay and it's pretty fast decently fast all right now <clears throat> it's time to play i mean let me first set some parameters to this new controller right here something like a folding angle so i can open up this one right here for a bit unlinking and then drag and drop this angle value to right here what else? We could also set the seed value for the coloring. And what else? Not much. Not much. Not much here. <clears throat> well, we could also create some parameters to change the geometry itself. We have tested with this rubber toy. But well, any geometry could be used actually. So let's try to create a bunch of geometry to test out. So I'm gonna use a switch node. And let's say, <coughs> starting with some tube. Oops. Cube geometry, have an end cap, have it as a polygon, and I have enough resolutions for the columns. Maybe the radius is too big, and let's set the height, and let's also set the angle like these, like these. These. All right, and maybe move this a little bit down. Oops, something like this. Change this to second one, and as a result, okay. Now I do see some weird stuff here. Maybe that is because it's related to somewhere right here okay this fill density is not working as I expected if I set it to 0.5 maybe 
that's better. Okay. <clears throat> and if I have a tube like this, well, it doesn't really look like a tube if you look from the side, but that's what you get. And you can still make it as a folded stuff. All right. And it is made of single plane like this. So if you by just creating a cutting line and some folding line, you'll be able to mm, translate this into a physical object as well. All right. <clears throat> Let me try with the other geometry. Let's see. Well, let, I'm going to create some simple ladder like or stair like geometry which I've shown in the uh, <clears throat> example. So let's start with the size equal to 0.5 and depth equal to 0.5. Oops, maybe this one, 2.5. And this one to 0.2. And I'm going to create division for a polygon mesh, I'm going to convert it into polygon mesh and then axis division to now this for this one I'm not going to use code it's going to take that a bit of time okay and this one to two oops this one to four now for the height I'm going to set it to 0.4. Now, I'm just going to select one of the face right here, maybe, and raise this up a little bit by 0.4. Okay. This will create a 45 degree stair or a slope, but we can convert it into stair by convert it into a voxel actually and let's also <clears throat> rotate this translate this one 180 degree and move it to backward by 0.4 not this way okay mm. I gotta make this 0.4 as well Okay, and move this up 0.4 as well. Okay, now do the same one one more time again. I'm going to rotate this and then move this 1.2. Now this is not procedural at all but it's just for testing okay now I'm gonna merge these all together and then connect it to here let's see if this okay and I'm going to move this stairs down a little bit move this one so that it touches well, it doesn't really need to touch the floor, but until it goes somewhere around here and then go to the offset right here. Maybe I can also make it a bit more bigger like these. That's too big. Mm, right. Well, just let's just go with these. Okay. Now what I can do switch this to the second one and as a result you should be able to see a stair like setup <clears throat> and you can change the size of the step by changing the resolution this easily and still be able to change the color and be able to create the folding now <clears throat> Since uh, 
some of you who you might are still in this live stream might be interested in creating this as a physical object so I'm gonna show you a one of the step you could do to make it as a cutting template <clears throat> using this as a you know, convert this into a cutting template which might include some unnecessary information but would, I'm gonna show you the starting point now what I'm going to do I'm going to copy this set right here and specifically I'm gonna call this as a cutting template and for this one I'm going to set the angle to oops did it again all right it happens once in a while I'm not sure if it's due to my memory lack of memory to my PC so I have crashed three times today fold to point uh, negative point 0.5 and let's delete the linking with the controller so that it will be kept as point negative point 0.5 so that it will become flat like this okay and I'm going to convert this into a <coughs> cutting template from here okay which is going to be pretty simple what I'm going to do now is to First of all, convert this into line. Okay, now that you have a bunch of lines. Now, the problem with this uh, is that you have some over, um, <clears throat> overlaps line. Like, for example, for these one, there are some bunch of overlapping lines. So, in order to remove that, you need to think of some smart way to <clears throat> do that. I'm not going to go into that. It might take some time to do that so I'm just gonna leave that but <clears throat> the important thing here is that the vertical line is basically the vertical line inside right here is going to be used for the cutting line and the horizontal line is used for the folding <clears throat> and only the one that's right here the, the horizontal line for this one and this one is going to be used for the cutting line okay <clears throat> So that, that's the basic rule. So we can group out these line using a rule, some rule to determine if it's horizontal or vertical. Okay, so uh, set cutting group. Okay, so for the cutting line, I'm gonna color as, as white and for the folding line, I'm gonna color it as red. Okay, and after that, you can export it into like IGES or Illustrator file for the fabrication, I guess. Say okay, so, and since we are looking at the primitive, uh, and each primitive is equal to line, so you only have two points. So it's easy to determine the direction of the line. First of all, I'm going to retrieve the point number point numbers from the primitive, which most of the case you have two points. I mean print points and PT1 is equal to PTS zero. <coughs> T2 is equal to what's this TS1 and then I can retrieve the point position at PT1 and point position at P2 
pt2 then we can retrieve the direction between position 2 to position 1 and we can normalize this one now <clears throat> if it's um, parallel to z direction then it's horizontal line if it's parallel to x direction and it then it's um, <clears throat> vertical line so we can again use the dot product to determine so the dot product gives you either negative or <clears throat> negative one or positive one if it's parallel to z direction if we use the zero zero one as a dot product between this direction so <clears throat> i'm going to use absolute to make the value absolute so all the negative will be positive so dot between the direction between the set mm, zero zero one <clears throat> and if it's more than 0.5 then meaning it is horizontal so in that case we can set the color to red like this and we want to set these uh, line which is at the edge to be set as white so to do that we can get the bounding box information for this geometry and we can do that by get first of all create a min max output value and then call get b box zero min max all right then use these information to deter to check with <clears throat> the point information right here so if position one dot um y and maybe i should do the subtraction maybe position one dot y minus um, max dot y is really small maybe i should check the absolute value here right here is really small like this then it's close to zero then in that case you want to skip it so i guess i should do the other way around this way so that i can use it with this condition oops <clears throat> okay i think i did something wrong here position one okay it should not be y but it should be x sorry all right so this one became white now i need one more condition or absolute position one dot x minus min dot x <coughs> is larger than 0 0.001 I mean this has to be and okay now <clears throat> all the cutting lines should be drawn as white and all the um, <clears throat> folding lines should be drawn as red now <clears throat> after this you can just like com bring this to some illustrator file or some other <clears throat> cat related file for sending for laser cutting or paper cutting most of you might use illustrator or cat drawing software like AutoCAD or Rhinoceros you can do that by using ROP geometry to change the um, <clears throat> extension to something like IGS and save it with a cutting name right here if I do that I should be able to create some geometry right here and let's check that out using some cat based software I'm gonna use rhino
<clears throat> Bring this up. Open this. Oop. Okay, now it's not colored. The color has been lost, so I guess I need to. I guess I need to set some other kind of <clears throat> attributes or something. Or maybe with the point uh, attribute or something. But as you can see, you can get this uh, cutting layout. Now this, as I said, this has a bit of problem because this has some overlaid lines. If you move this one, you still have line here. Okay, so <clears throat> in order to remove this overlaying, you need to do some do some CAD related <clears throat> uh, process, and I think this kind of process is not good, uh, not effectively done with Houdini but more effectively done in this kind of CAD related uh, environment <clears throat> in terms of the nerves curve operation but I guess you could still do that in Houdini but I'm not gonna go into that okay so that's it that's pretty much it for today that I wanted to show you <clears throat> and I am going to end this by setting some additional parameter and hope you guys have some <clears throat> insight for, all, for what I did here today if you have any questions I'm happy to know If not, thank you for coming. <clears throat> um, I am going to leave this video as a recording, <clears throat> as an archive, so you can watch it later. And I'm going to upload the file that I've just created and paste the link to the video description <clears throat> to this YouTube video so that you can download it by yourself download it and use it for, your, for yourself okay and if you found these um, live streaming that I'm doing really interesting and helpful it will be great if you could <clears throat> support me on patreon which I have which there is a link in the video description as well okay all right, so let's see how this. I need. I might need one more switch to go back and forth this cutting and the base geometry. So I'm gonna use this toggle. Uh, <clears throat> sheet copy this one switch between this geometry and this cutting sheet and link it right here all right so I can oops oh mm, another crashing okay Let me go back and finalize the parameter and I will finish this. I'm not really sure what's the reason for this these kind of crashing. <clears throat> I mean, it happens a lot since I have updated to 18.5, I think. But I can't really... <clears throat> break down what's the reason because it's pre looks pretty random all right now where is it so toggle this to change either cutting sheet or the geometry you can also set the resolution you can change the 
type of geometry. No, this kind of stuff I don't want to do in physical. It's too too high res. It is interesting, but it's too much detail. Maybe this is possible. Okay, I like this one. It only has limited amounts of primitive, but you can change the detail. It works. All right. <clears throat> so uh, by using this, I think you'll be able to create any kind of pop folding uh, stuff, which you can find it some somewhere in Pinterest, like these one, these one. This is interesting. Yeah, you can create this one as well, I think. You can do this one as well, this one as well. Yeah, I want to try now everything. I do love to try now everything. This is uh, looking from the backside, I guess. Now, this is a bit, uh, a bit different. It's using a curve. Uh, but uh, I guess it's the same, yeah. Uh, it does have the curves right here. In my setup, it's <coughs> it's going to be um, vertical, so it's a bit different. But if I look at, if you care, be careful about the rule how this being made, maybe you can mimic this kind of shape as well, based on the things that I did. This is totally possible. Yeah. Okay. So. Hopefully, you'll be able to use this for your <coughs> uh, thumb. And play with it. Play with this. Play with this setup. And it will be great if you could show me some image if you have made something with it. All right, so this is it. Thank you very much for watching. And thank you all for all the comments as well. <clears throat> I know this was a really long one, long one and a lot of coding. But um, the things that I have shown you might be useful for some cases. So uh, <clears throat> maybe looking at the file might uh, be useful for you. Okay, so good night, and I will see you all next week. Hopefully, I'm going to. I'm trying to go do the same Houdini tutorial live with a different topic next week around the same time. Okay, and I'm also planning to upload the tutorial video for a series called Vex for Algorithmic Design sometime this weekend <clears throat> and the topic for this weekend is noise basics okay so thank you good night